there was no electricity, you know, and it's a really tough walk. So everything had to be like really lightweight and it also had to be able to be charged with solar power. What was your favourite moment that didn't make the cut? I think, to be honest, I would have liked to have filmed some things that we didn't film and the reason we didn't film them was because the journey was just too dangerous at that point. So I think in a way for me more so than things that didn't that we did film that didn't make the cut I think it was things where we were really struggling because like the paths had been washed away by rivers and so we were having to like forge through rivers or like at one point the donkeys got scared and they were trying to go into the river and we had like the donkey man on the end of his tail kind of pulling him back. Another moment where the donkey started slipping down the cliffs, like right above my head, and so, and below was like a massive drop, and luckily it stopped slipping before it got to me. But so yeah. there were like moments like that that I feel like the film does show the difficulty of the yeah. journey. But for me, like I wish we'd had, you know, if we'd had a bigger crew or something, maybe we could have managed to film some of those more dangerous moments. So James Corden is my favourite YouTuber to watch. What videos did you show the Snowland teens, and what was their reaction towards all these videos? Well, it's funny you mentioned YouTube, actually, because we did use YouTube as a big part of their training. Um, the main one was Jack's Gap. You know, he travels um, on his own and um, films himself. And because the, some of the children were going to be completely alone, it was really important that they kind of learn how to talk into the camera um, and how to kind of turn the camera into their friend so that we got that kind of added sense of intimacy. So you gave all the three teenagers their own cameras to film the journeys with. What was the scariest thing about this unusual method of filmmaking. It took us quite a long time to work out how to actually equip them with, with equipment because where they were going, there was no electricity, you know, and it's a really tough walk. So everything had to be like really lightweight and it also had to be able to be charged with solar power. And then also like they'd learnt filmmaking, but we couldn't make it too complicated. So we wanted something that would do like sound and camera in one. Um, so it was quite scary, I think, just seeing them set off, you know, it was one camera with a solar charging backpack, um, lots and lots of memory cards, but we didn't have any facility, even when we were there with slightly bigger cameras and bigger solar chargers, um, and we had those carried by donkeys, you know, um, but even then we didn't have any backups, we couldn't take laptops, we couldn't take hard drives to make copies of things, so I think that was kind of the scariest thing, yeah. Funny you mentioned that because the earthquake must have had a massive, must have been a massive challenge during filming. What were the other challenges other than these donkey <laughs> slips um, from making this documentary? Yeah, the, definitely the, the sort of conditions were really challenging, the lack of electricity, the walking. Walking was really hard, you know, and I was nowhere near fit enough. So yeah. uh, first day actually, so Dicky was like helping me like massage my muscles and stuff because <laughs> I was in so much pain. Um, I think that was kind of the, the hardest thing actually, was like the physical conditions and really shocking, yeah. Um, so Sarah, you've done so many things for the first time, like flying in the aeroplane. What was your favourite or scariest thing to do for the first time? We travelled one night from bus, but it was like in Nepal, the road is not so good, you know, it's like a bumping one, boom, boom, and the very narrow one, so it was the danger also. So women do most of the work in the village. What surprised you most about the life in your village? We are you know, hearing that men are the strong, men, is, men are stronger than they will do the harder work. We heard about that, but uh, women are the hero in the our village. They are doing more work. Men just does like a small business to China border like this, but the women are the hero in the, our village. So they does everything. They look after their children, their husband, and all the field, everything. And they got also animals, so they have to look after animals also. So it's top one. <laughs> what would you tell younger Snowland children about what it's like to make your journey back home after so many years? After going back to my village and after knowing my family feelings and all those things and I got that I would like to see my Snowland family also uh, they are sacrificing their uh, their happiness just for our futures just to get education because there is no education where we can fulfill our dream and where we can be uh, we can just um, be on the, our own foot, but mm -hmm. uh, be, because of their sacrifice, we are in the Kathmandu. So you know, we we don't have to think that our parents are not loving us. They are struggling. They are in the uh, very um, poor condition, and so they don't me uh, want to be like their uh, their life. So yeah. so going back changed your perspective. Yeah.